Um, if you all aren't familiar with me, my name is Brittany Parker, and I'm the founder of A Green Legacy. Uh, that's an organization supporting um, underrepresented, underestimated cannabis entrepreneurs and professionals. And so we do that in a variety of different ways, uh, one part being education, another part being community, and then another piece being programming. So we've been around for about mm, a year and some now. So we've, we've made our one year mark. Woo! And I just really love being able to uh, run this business lounge uh, every month for Tokativity. Um, it's so nice to see all of the new businesses that are popping up. And so if you would like to tell us about yourself, introduce us to your business, anything like that, please do come on up to the stage. Uh, all you have to do is use your, it'll ask you if you want to share your audio or your video. Um, and you just say, yeah, you want to do it. And then you can come up. So do want to hear about your businesses, want to hear everything about you all. Um, and then also there is comments to the right. So if you would like to say anything, um, but you don't want to be on camera, anything like that, ask questions. Those are always really great too. So I am so happy to see you all. And Nicole, I'm so happy <laughs> to meet you in Southern oh. California, um, eating up all of the sun that I wish I had. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> I do need to come down again. I um I haven't been to San Diego in a few years now, but yeah. Uh, and I've only been once. Oh, and, okay. But it was it happened at the perfect time because you know, when you when you live in the Pacific Northwest, you've already determined that you're cool with it being uh cloudy 9 months out of the year. Yeah. And so we went in I want to say it was like February. Wasn't super hot, but it was way hotter, way sunnier than anything that I was used to at that time of the year. So yeah. I, I need to make my way. Yes, Tell us you about do. yourself. I want to hear about your Yeah. Business. So I'm actually a native Oregonian. I was up there for several years and I started my business. Um, I own a marketing advertising agency and I started that business up in Portland 20 years ago. Um, and then about <clears throat> six years ago, mm -hmm. I, I had people, some of my clients got into the cannabis space and they said, help. <laughs> so anyway, I started, um, NUG digital marketing, hey. um, six years ago. And so I was kind of splitting my time between Portland and Palm Springs mm -hmm. area. Um, so I spend, I'm about an hour from Palm Springs, an hour from San Diego right now. And I spend a lot of time um, in the Coachella Valley. As you all know, it's huge for cannabis down here. I'm yes. on the board for, for CV Can. That's the Coachella Valley Cannabis Association. Yeah. We've got Hall of Flowers coming down. Um, and so that's going to be super and that's fun. In May. May. Or that's in uh, August? No, it's in May. Oh, it's in May. The okay. first week in May is it's going to be all the cannabis peeps are going to be like coming into into Palm Springs. Oh, so my if God. anybody's oh, coming my... down, <laughs> let me yeah. know. Yeah, like um, if any of you are headed out to Cali, uh, make sure to hit up Nicole. So do yeah. you still focus primarily in marketing? Oh, yeah. So we, we're basically the soup to nuts full service marketing agency. Uh, for cannabis, CBD, hemp, um, and we do everything from creating logos and branding. We do a lot of WordPress websites. And then after that, it's all about driving traffic. And we do that through SEO, pay-per-click advertising, email marketing, social media, PR. Um, all just, that. Yeah, all, all things marketing to get people business. So Yes, and you know what? That's I feel like those are the best environments to even work in like I, I uh so interestingly enough i used to be a teacher i was an elementary teacher for uh many years and then i ended up transitioning into tech marketing and so that's i still do consulting for uh cannabis businesses oh what what was so um i feel like one thing that has always given me such an edge is having worked in a company exactly like yours 
where we were doing everything end to end. And so everything from like technology setup Mm -hmm. all the way to like reporting and PR. And so it is just, oh, hats off to you for creating that space, for creating that kind of company. Um, Because it's, it's complicated when you focus on so many different areas. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That is so wonderful. So Y'all, if you are looking for an agency, if you're looking for a marketing agency, hit up Nicole. Her uh, The name of her company is Nugs, and she can do everything. She's <laughs> like the full suite. So, <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, and I will, I will mention, too, that we are hiring. I am looking oh, for yeah. like a, a project manager, operations manager. And I would yeah. love for somebody who has been in, um, worked in an advertising marketing yeah. agency before that has that background, because um, we're, we're growing. So we are looking. Ooh. And I'll, I'll put a little something in here, um, too. Yeah, in the, please, in the do you have a, a job description around? I do. Yeah. Okay. I just posted it, on- it up on, on LeafWire today. Wonderful, wonderful. I will absolutely share that with the A Green Legacy community. Um, and then also the other folks that I've worked with in, in marketing. Um, Melissa, good to see you again. Um, yeah, because that's wonderful. How many? So you're looking for a project manager. You're looking for, did you say program management as well? Well, it's kind of project management operations okay. manager. Yeah. All so, right. So that's the main job that we're um, hiring for right now. But I always look for talent, you know, in social media, um, photography, video, um, WordPress. Wonderful. Content. Wonderful. Hey, yeah. do you bring in consultants and freelancers? We do. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I might have to hit you up then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, Melissa, how are you? I am good. I'm good. I feel like I jumped on late. I like got here and I'm like, what's going on on the stage? What's going on? Like, and then I come in here and I'm, I'm like, is this recorded? Are they live? Like, I'm so confused. <laughs> Happy 420, ladies. Happy 420 to you. Happy 420 to you. And you know, I, I completely understand. So usually um, whenever, for anyone who doesn't know, we have 12 people on at the moment. So for anyone who doesn't know, usually um, when we do these, the business lounge is like at the tail end of the event. So this is actually the first time that it's ever been at the front end. And so it's, it's been interesting. I mean, it's been great. It's, but I can understand the confusion because I don't know, there's something about when you first log on to an event and you haven't had time to like transition, um, in the way that we usually do it. It throws things off. <laughs> Tell us about your visit, Melissa, or your business, Melissa. I know you're out in Jamaica. Correct. Yes, I am in Jamaica, and I I have um, I'm Mel of Mel Street Eats, and I'm Jamaica's leading cannabis edibles brand. And I also host an event called Buds and Brushes JA, which is in three days. It's on uh, the 23rd on Saturday, which we are doing a giveaway here on the Tokativity Social today. So um, I'm excited for whoever the winner is. Um, yeah, so Buds and Brushes is actually an event that continuously gives back to various charities across Jamaica. We've been on the virtual platform now because of COVID for the past two years, but on Saturday, we are finally going outside. Um, so we are hosting, we have a hybrid event, so it's both virtual and also in person. The greatest part about the event is that we give back to charities. So we help women and children in Jamaica with HIV, at-risk women where a cell phone can save their lives, um, Ebenezer Home for for men is for men with men, mental illness. We have a lot of crime going on here in Jamaica, and we are happy to be able to help you know charities that support people with mental illness. Yeah. Um, so many different charities, about 10 charities, so I won't take up too much time. Just That's go over beautiful. to the Brushes JA page and check it out. But it's this Saturday, and it's live music, live DJs, live yoga, live art, live sound healing. It starts at 2 p.m. on Saturday. It goes all the way up until 4.20 in the morning. Um, And you can tune in from anywhere in the world. Um, 
performances worldwide from as far as um, Zimbabwe to as far as Australia to right here in Jamaica. So it's, yes. a, it's a full, 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 full force event. Um, and the kind of stuff that I'm looking for is platforms like these. Thank you guys so much for having us and always just echoing what we're doing because you guys know in the cannabis world, I've had stuff taken down over the past two weeks just because it says cannabis gives back, which is so annoying because I'm just like, here we are using cannabis for the goodness to bring people together so we can give to our fellow people. And yeah, it got taken down. I was quite upset, but you it was the first time it happened to me. So <laughs> it is. It, it is remarkable how often it that happens and how often even just the Instagram algorithm changes so dramatically. You know what I've been doing as a workaround on posts for for um, on Instagram is I'll take uh, for cannabis, like instead of A's, I'll use the at sign. And usually that's enough to trick it so that, you know, it's not kicking your photos off and, and your posts down. It's just, it's ridiculous. I don't use any hashtags anymore that are associated with, uh, that uh, have the actual word like cannabis or pot or canna in it um, because of that same reason, because they'll take your post down from just like the hashtags that you used to. Yeah, so, it's, it's really annoying though. Like it's like, and it I, is, I think about the the world that we live in and like even here in the islands where we have we have all inclusive parties alcoholic parties like where you go and you drink all you want and it's okay to drive home after you're done drunk yeah but here we are talking and 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 the funny part is even with the event like we don't necessarily even though it's a cannabis event that's not what we talk about when we talk about the event because it's more than just the cannabis um you know so it, it as i said it's just annoying the hell out of me <laughs> I mean, it's like the double standard and it's just, oh, it's, it's so frustrating. It is so frustrating. And in Jamaica is cannabis is only technically medically legal, right? Um, well, it's decriminalized. So, okay. and medically in quotes for sure, um, but it's decriminalized. So you're allowed to carry on yourself two ounces and you're allowed to plant um, your own personal five plants for yourself in your household. Okay. So if you live on a lot with five homes, that's, 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 that's five right. different plants. Like I live by, I, my landlord lives in the front and I have oh, my cottage at the back and I'm always like, you know, you can have five and I can have five. That's 10 plants right there, you know? Um, but let's it's them together. Okay. Yeah, but but edibles, which is what I do here in Jamaica, is still illegal. Um, so I operate in, in somewhat of the gray area of the industry. I always say that the government is either going to make a good example out of me or a bad example out of me. And so far for the past eight years that I've been in business, I've actually been able to, you know, make a good example so far, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm trying to continue on that path. Yes. And we're going to put that into the universe that things are going to continue to go in that exact path. Um, if you are in the audience right now, I know that we have 13 people viewing at the moment. Um, feel free to come up. Tell us about your business. Don't be scared. We won't bite. Um, and we just want to know about your business. So get it out there. Um, I love when something that happens on here, y'all, a, a whole lot is we'll have a few different people who have like different skills or different businesses and they'll be like, oh, I actually need somebody to do my accounting. I was just looking for a bookkeeper or whatever. And the other person's like, oh, well, that's my exact business. And so those kind of connections happen here so, so often. And, you know, I also am a freelance writer and I write for Leafly and Weed Maps primarily. And so I always, every time I hear about someone new, I'm like, ooh, I need to do a story about them. Or like, ooh, how can I loop this into something, something for somebody that I can pitch? So for real, y'all, come up here. Opportunities happen. Now, um, one thing that I would love for you to do, Nicole, can you also, do you have a Instagram page, website, uh, anything like that, that you can pop in our chat for us? And Melissa, do you all, you all are doing your event, you said this upcoming week? Okay, so now. On Saturday, on Saturday, which is the 23rd. 
Okay. Okay. And, and with your event, this is only a one-time event, right? Or does this happen actually, every year? Actually, no. We've actually been doing it every other month for the past two years. Um, okay. So um, I just graduated from Canabesiac University and I got to kind of start to just learn how to sometimes take a break. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to take a break since I've been doing the event because of the sole purpose of the event. Every time I'm not doing it, I just keep thinking about the fact that I'm not able to try to give back to a charity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's every it's what I'm doing now from from my my knowledge and trying to be gentle with myself is I'm going to do only three times or four times for the year. So I have this one, mm -hmm. um, which we came onto the virtual platform platform on 420 of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so happy anniversary us. Um, uh, but we're going to the next one after this would be in July. And then okay. after that would be in October. And then oh, right. and also guys, just so you know, this is an, a traveling event. We've hosted over 100 talents worldwide. So if you want to take buds and brushes to wherever you are, we are more than welcome to come and join you. What we really are hoping for is some really good sponsorship. We have great sponsors. We don't have cash sponsors as is yet. So we're kind of limited to a lot of the things we do. So if I want to fly artists from Australia, I'm going to have to be able to you, you get what I'm saying to take them with me. <laughs> But yeah, but so if you ever want us to come to a city near you, um, feel free to. to yes. <laughs> well, and now that we can all be outdoors again, it's just, oh my God. I uh, actually just, I went to Puerto Rico last month and I went there for a festival, for an Afrobeats festival. And um, it was just, there was so much about it that was glorious. There was a lot of dis dysfunction with the concert in and of itself, but um just to be around people again just to be like in the same space physically with someone else that like I might end up rubbing shoulders with or randomly talking to it, it felt like I was being reborn I, I've really really missed uh being able to just do more things outside Ashley Yo! How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. And I just, abs I love the pictures on your wall in the background. So oh, thank you. I, those are so great. Those are a local artist did that for, for us. And it's kind of like featured around my family and yeah. our family hemp farm. DNA hemp. <laughs> DNA hemp. Tell us about it. Tell us about, what do you do? What do oh, you my do? Goodness. Tell us everything. Tell us about yourself what you're doing today, what your business is all about, all of it. Yes, all the feel good things. I'm Ashley, I'm the A in DNA. My husband's Danny, so together we're Danny and Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and we are just cannabis enthusiasts here in Wisconsin. Uh, we have a family farm in Farmington, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, which that's, is about 50 minutes north of Milwaukee. Okay. And uh, we are just some literally from seed to soul, I like to say, because the farm to table is used a ton and I love that too. Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're growing hemp and I feel like that presents a lot of challenges here in Wisconsin in and of itself. I'm sure. Not only with all the, the constrictions on advertising and social media, uh, but you know, not having the, the marijuana aspect of it either. Yeah. So um, financially, yeah. it's just you have to have mad hustle with a dope soul. Like every oh day God. I'm hustling. Yes. I'm, I'm doing gummies right now because I'm like sampling them out for my event in a couple hours. So I'm like, <laughs> gotta get it moving. You, but, you better go. You better go. I feel like when it comes to hemp, when it comes to CBD, a lot of my clients, are uh, CBD and hemp companies, and it is just just <laughs> the amount of difference. The the uh, just just the saturation, the saturation of the market, the the fact that there's still such a learning curve that people are they don't know the difference between like their uh, gas station CBD and like getting like really good CBD flour or uh, oil or a gummy from a 
place that knows what they're doing, getting it directly from those, um, what do we call them out here? Uh, those craft cannabis farms and companies. Uh, it's it can be it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating out here. So the fact that you are like hustling it out, you are doing it. Y'all are going. That <laughs> is, is a huge, yes. huge clap. How long have you all been around? Uh, since 2019. So okay. we're going on our fourth growing season out here. And I just have been living, loving, learning and down oh. for the ride. I'm in the flow and just the adventure that we've been on and the doors that cannabis has opened for us has been pretty epically amazing. So, so um, I feel like in our first year, Tokativity really inspired us with like the flower crown event. Yep. Yes. And yes. so oh, we kind of bring, we connected that with the farm. We'll do like seasonal flower crowns. Um, mm. and you know, like use the spring flowers and the things that from farm and just so utilize, utilize so what mother earth has given us. So I, it's been really, really cool. I love that. Ashley, if you are in Wisconsin, Wisconsin has more than cheese out there because Ashley oh, yeah. is out there. She is out yes. there. She owns DNA hemp. Um, and you also mentioned that you have a event coming up. Tonight. Okay. Uh, my, I also run a my family's bar restaurant at Cheryl's Club 175, and we're doing a 420 Crunch and Munch. Oh, nice. uh, so we nice. actually have three different foods. We're um, doing a blazing hot buffalo or a barbecue sauce for our uh -huh. wings, a token uh, buffalo um, chicken tacos, and then the Dankinator, where we're okay. infusing an awesome sauce, which well, is like a, the Bang Bang sauce. Uh, what for is the Bang burger. Bang sauce? So, uh, the bank well it's like the thai chili sriracha and mayo oh well that sounds really good why have i why it have i not had this okay so it's oh my god thai chili sriracha oh, and mayo sorry mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. I, I i would like that in my life i would like that yes <laughs> on shrimp on chicken everything it's like the the epic mayo sauce we call it awesome sauce <laughs> we, that sounds we're putting it on a burger so all good pub fair, we're incorporating in with the plant medicine. Wonderful. And it really just gives us the opportunity to be able to educate with the community and just get out there with these one-on-one, -on -one, like these personal yes. hands-on events and get get the, the plant medicine in people's hands and catch a vibe. You know? Absolutely. Will you do me a favor, Ashley? Will you uh, pop in your handles where people can find you? Yes. And... Uh, we would love to see that. I'm not sure what's happening here with this random. More people are joining. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I don't know what this big not. screen is. It's. Oh. I'm not sure. But maybe we're gonna figure it out. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. What happened to Joyce? Oh. Oh, maybe that was something with Joyce's. Oh, there's. Oh, there you back. are. There you are. I, I don't, technology is scaring me. <laughs> 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 it scares all of us, Joyce. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Ash Woman versus machine, we win. Exactly. <laughs> Ashley, put your your contact information, the way that people can find you, the way that they can find DNA Hemp. Put that in the chat for us. And Joyce, okay. I want to hear about your podcast and and what you do and what brought you to the cannabis industry. So nice to meet you. Thank you. I love. Oh, I think I'm echoing. Oh, let's see. Hold on here. I'm gonna mute. Let's see. How is it now? Now. Can now I try it again. I think I'm still yeah. echoing. Yeah. Let's Maybe I should leave and come back. Try I'll it. Back. Try it. Let's see what happens. All right. We're gonna wait for Joyce to come back in. My throat is so dry and I just, it's, it is definitely cotton mouth. <laughs> I was uh, using a uh, Jack Herrera tincture earlier and it's just made my mouth so dry. Uh, Joyce, you're back. Try it again. Is that better? It it sounds yeah. it sounds really good oh, on our side. Uh, okay, all right. The whole time. <laughs> I've been I did my podcast today and I was on a podcast. I feel like I've been talking a lot. So I'm trying to roll a joint while I'm actually talking to you, but I can't do two things at once. <laughs> That's a very yeah. pretty joint. I can already tell that Thank it's you. going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so I do the podcast, the Canon Mom show. We're finishing up our third season. 
I've been a Tokativity fan forever. Samantha came out. I'm in. I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Samantha came out in 2019 before the pandemic, and I walked her around, and um, it was just awesome. She was trying to set up, you know, consumption parties out here before the pandemic, and then everything went online. Mm -hmm. I just the Tokativity community has kind of kept me going during the pandemic. I I mean, I I did the mm -hmm. holiday parties. I would dance with you guys. You know, like like the the, the deep in 2020. I'm like. I'm gonna get on with DJ Frankie, and I'm gonna see my friends. I may never have a holiday party again, but I have all of you. So yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, funny enough, I met DJ Frankie. Um, Lisa came to Seattle. I'm located in Seattle. Lisa came to Seattle. I met DJ Frankie, and oh, what was the other woman's name? We all met at a Mexican place. It was great. And then we microdosed some shrooms and went dancing at one of the lesbian bars that's uh, in our like downtown area. And it was such a good time. But that same energy that you just described with tokativity and like the community and the family that it that it really brings in is so true. It is so true. It resonates so much. Huh. And I met and I did meet Lisa. I was at um, the Women in Cannabis Expo. Uh, September. So How I was got it? To hang out with Lisa. It was really good. We won. So the Cannabis Mom Show has been around for three years. We won um, a podcast award at the Women in Cannabis Expo. That was good. We just won a uh, best podcast in Massachusetts cannabis podcast. So, you know, we're a niche podcast. We talk about mm -hmm. women and only women in the emerging yes. industry. When I talk to men, you know, I know it's men dominated, but I'm like, oh my god, there are men in cannabis. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had like, oh, what do you all do? You know what? We probably do we need is there any social justice work that we need to do for you all? Because I just have not experienced any men since I've been in here. <laughs> Made them real thick. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. So, you know, I'm a woman of a certain age. Cannabis was not part of my lifestyle. I'm a lawyer by training. I have kids yeah. in their 20s. I've been married 30 years. And I um I say I got into cannabis through the perfect trifecta of desperation, isolation, and rejection. Yes. And, yes. you know, women of my age, we were just told to do everything. We did everything. We got mm -hmm. our law degrees. We got our business degrees. We got our engineering degrees. And then we had kids. Yeah. And when we dared to take time off to care for those people who do not raise themselves, I don't know if people know this, we were literally punished. And and yes. we women, and I, I hear this a lot from the women in the industry now, we were so alone. We were often isolated in our professionalism. We had no community. And that for the first time when they come into cannabis, we're really trying to do this as a collaboration and not as a competition. Yeah. So I, and that's the message I keep trying to get out. That's a message I'm spreading with my little podcast. And that's why I love Tokativity and Kira and what all of you like. I'm like, I'm doing a podcast in my daughter's bedroom. I got little uh -huh. butterfly wings, but <laughs> this network together, you know, I've interviewed yes. 115, 116 women at this point. Wow. Wow. You know, yeah. And Joyce, one thing that's, uh, been so interesting to me. So I was uh, telling the ladies before you joined, um, I used to be a teacher. I was an elementary teacher. And then I, I switched into tech marketing and I did tech marketing for uh, quite a while before I moved into cannabis. And um, one thing that I ended up doing at the last company that I worked at, the very last company that I worked at before coming into cannabis is I ended up starting a women's group, an ERG for our company. And it was like every single woman, every single one of us was going through the same exact issue. And it was almost as if we had never had an opportunity to like talk to each other about it, to know that it wasn't just us. Like things didn't just feel weird because we thought that these yeah. things were happening just to us. Like it was a systemic issue. And so um, what you're doing is so incredibly important. And now we get to this place where we're just getting out of the pandemic. And so uh, there was this really fascinating research that came out, uh, I think at the tail end of 2020. And it was talking about how the pandemic happening ended up reversing so much of the progress that we had made getting women into the workplace. And so when the pandemic hit, chances are 
uh, you had once you had one situation where our gender pay gap was into play. So it's like if you're not women are more likely not to be the breadwinner. So they're more than likely the one who has to leave their job if, you know, the kids can't go to school and all of that. And then there's also the societal uh, pressure to be that the caregiver of the children and and the person responsible for all of that. But then the other piece was that, you know, we're more likely to be laid off and fired uh, during this time. We were more than likely or we were uh, more likely to um, be the one who just ends up leaving the workforce because, you know, whatever shifts have happened with the family due to the pandemic, they affected us. So we took a lot of really big steps back. Um but I just yeah. sort of my flipped on my flip on this is that yeah. so when I was coming up, you were told you literally couldn't do my job at home, which was just like a big waste of a lot of transportation time. And yes. I always felt like I was failing everywhere. I was late. I was failing at work. I wasn't whatever it was. It was just it was like a constant. It was in my head, and and I, and I will say, women like me, we're exceptional. I'm 57. We're of this weird generation. We did everything. We literally did everything. We got our degrees mm -hmm. and our children and got married, and then it was normalized. <laughs> And then it was normalized. And it's not normal. Anyway, so <laughs> now we can see that you can do your job at home. It is perfectly possible. You know, yeah. you don't have to do FaceTime. And the, uh, there are ways to create a business that doesn't follow the old rules. I mean, that's kind of my hope for Absolutely. cannabis. That's what I, I'm hopeful with the women leaders I'm meeting. Is that yeah. real, they're literally creating these new worlds because they can. They have the power to do it. That's what's very yeah. powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, let's see, you said you said something that I was like, oh, I want to oh. make sure to ramble. Um, I don't know. No, it, it <laughs> was something so good. Home. I don't know. <laughs> it was something so good. Um, oh, man. I want to give a, a shout out to but the um, you, males. You, but you make such yeah, yeah. an it's... amazing point. I mean, oh, that's what it was. Uh, when it comes to that remote piece, it's like, even just thinking about the amount of time that I get back because I don't really have to commute anywhere is, is or get amazing. dressed. Yeah. Or get <laughs> dressed. Like this is one of the first tokativity events where I've actually had on like real pants. And so like these things, I want that to stay around. But then, you know, when I think about uh, <laughs> accessibility for those with like, physical dis physical and and mental disabilities you know so long i remember i had a coworker who our uh, one of our managers within our company would not let would not allow her to work from home even though she had had this really debilitating back injury um that made it so hard for her to uh ride the train to come into work it made it so hard for her to sit in a chair at our office all day. Um, she really needed time to like lay. And those were things that um, she couldn't do. So she ended up being a part-time employee uh, because they would not allow her to work remote. So I feel like we're right now, there are some aspects of like these societal issues that um, we see in the culture, like the work, the traditional work culture past um, that, you know, the playing field is really being leveled. And so I'm just so hopeful that we can continue to keep that, keep all of those things around. And if there's anybody who could make these things stick around, I think it is the powerful women who I'm looking at right now. Uh, and everyone who's part of this cannabis industry, but really across the board, if anybody can do it, women can do it. So I'm just so happy to see so many, so many owners here in front of me who are, uh, who have the power to, to make those changes. Tiffany, so good to see you again. How are you? I am well. How is everyone doing? So, so good. Awesome. I just had to pop on to say hello. I couldn't pass it up. I was like, oh, sessions are live? What's going on in here? So 
<laughs> Hello to everyone. A couple of uh, familiar faces and a couple of faces that I don't know, but I think I know, but I don't know. <laughs> That's what makes 420 wonderful. Yes. You get to get high and not remember if you know someone or not. Exactly. You know what? Honestly, Tiffany, that's what makes most cannabis events so special. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. I, I really enjoy that. You know, you were speaking about women and all the power that we have. Joyce, I heard what you said in a certain age group. Uh, we are, um, you know, remarkable. We've done yes. a lot of a lot of things. But yeah, I think the most important thing that we've done uh, over the last at least decade is become more comfortable being ourselves and whatever that includes. Right. And so for some of us, it includes cannabis. And I am so happy about that because even if people don't utilize cannabis, having that freedom to choose what it is that you would like in your environment for self-care speaks yes. volumes for yes. all of us. So, yes. you know, I think as sometimes people go, well, you're a cannabis person. That's why you're a weed girl. So that's why. Well, no, it's not exactly that. It's because I champion for freedom of choice. Yes. And that trickles into everything. So yes. the more power there, the more power we all have. Right. So seriously, Tiffany, and, and piggybacking on that, you know, it's, it, it's, it is the access that being able to have access to options and alternatives it's yeah. so much of um of our society is kind of already dictated so even i was just i was just talking recently about um i had this experience one of one of the worst places that i really i really i hate mommy communities like mommy like groups when it comes to like my kids school the mommy groups within that are like very cliquish and it's really just uh, it's uh, it's one of those things where I'm like ooh, this is just so not me that I know that this is not where I want to spend my time but um but I love cannabis mom communities but randomly I uh, I'm part of this um, mom group here in Seattle. Uh, it's um, for just moms who live on the east side of, of the greater Seattle area. And even though I don't live on the east side, it's been a really great uh, group to like figure out what's going on. Like, is there some school? My son goes to a monastery school right now. So we were trying to figure out where he's going to go next. So I'm always in that group just like kind of looking in in the background and so recently I had this experience where a mom um was asking the mom group this non-cannabis mom group um if they knew how Washington State handles finding cannabis in your system or in your blood work when you have a baby and it just sprouted this. The conversation was exactly what I'm sure all of you all can imagine, where it just ended up being so many women who were like, how could you do that to your baby? How could you be so selfish? How can you blah, 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 blah. And, um, and, and it was just another reason why it's like, this is why I hate mom community. Well, let me say non-cannabis mom communities is because of this exact thing. And I put this, I commented and I was like, listen, cannabis is medicine first, recreation second. People consume cannabis in so many different ways. You have an endocannabinoid system that actually produces some of these exact, uh, <clears throat> some of these exact cannabinoids that you find in the cannabis plant. So I'm saying these things and it was just, it, it was just such a mess. And it was one of those moments where it was like, this is exactly why you have people who do not access or even try to explore cannabis as an option for whatever they're dealing with, because there's, because there's this, because there's this. And this is why you see so many women and so many moms, especially who don't even talk about their use or don't even 
want to access it because they can't, they feel like they can't, or they feel like they're doing something wrong. So, so much of what you're talking about, what you were talking about, Tiffany, is just uh, being in a community. Difficult. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it, it's difficult because there's a lot of fear out there. And I think that's the, the first part. Um, I don't know that I hate the mommy groups. I, I, I really, I don't, I don't, but you know what? My kids are grown, so I don't really have any place in a mommy's group anyway. Um, but, you know, I think that we have to remember that fear, the fear programming that was put out was so effective. It was. So much money was thrown at it. Yep. That the fear is generational. So it's passed down. Who doesn't believe what their grandmother said? Who doesn't yep. believe what their parents said, right? So I think that the first layer of overcoming that really is to urge people to do their own research and That's to true. remind them when they think stoner, when they think marijuana, they're seeing right. a specific person. They're seeing a specific type of person, whether it be like the shaggy guy with the long yep. hair and the glasses. They're seeing something. They're forgetting that there are people that look like all of us moms on the run with their children because they've chosen cannabis as a form of therapy for their child, yes. but they had to go on the run. I really yeah. try to give people that type of information. Go look up that. Go look up what the effect of the war on drugs was, but stay away from persons of color. Yes. Let's not go for the obvious. We know that money was spent there, but yes. go and look and see the women who were affected by the war on drugs and, yes. and paint a true picture for yourself because it removes a lot of that bias and having yes. people go and do the research for themselves. It's just like when you have your kids do something for themselves, they're a little bit more proud. They're a little bit more intuitive and they're a little bit more interactive. So I usually try to urge people when they, they respond with fear to go look it up, go see what really happened. And, and remember that there's a story told. Yes. And it was told to your, your, your whole, your whole group that came before you, your, your parents, your grandparents and, and great grandparents mm -hmm. have been told to them, go find out for yourself what it really looks like and who was really targeted. And because, you know, we, we do, we, we stick in, in one area for, you know, we go, oh, people of color, oh, women, we'll go look and see what really happened. Yes. And then you make your own assessment because unless you're really just completely one-sided, which means that we have to have another conversation, yep. then you are enlightened. You will see that there's another side to the story. Yes. And you can make a fair assessment because when I hear that, oh my God, what are you doing to your kids? Oh no, what did you do? Those are just, that's just fear. It is. So it's okay. It is. It's cool. We all get scared sometimes and, and it makes sense. It's, it's totally cool to be scared, but you must be informed as well. Yes. Yes. Melissa said, I just had a mom call to tell me not to sully her 33 year old daughter anymore. We yeah. had this whole conversation on the plant and by the end she felt a little better. Yeah, it was a it was a mom who discovered some edibles in her 33 year old daughter's room uh, last year. October was the first time she called me um, because I have, you know, my edibles education on their phone number to call and everything. And she called and, you know, she had the conversation with me first, just wondering what it's all about, you know, and she's like her thing was she's like, you know, I'm not really against it. But at the same time, and you know, her her daughter suffers from um, depressed that your daughter is, is, um, is uh, takes antidepressants. Um, and she has a, a, I forgot what her um, her mental capacity was. But either way, what she did notice, it's funny, because when we now when we spoke last week, I said mm -hmm. to her, I go, I go, it's interesting, though, that you're calling me now to say because when she called, she's like, I just want to tell you, I don't want you selling to my daughter at all and I had to ask her again I'm like how old is your daughter again she goes 33 and I go can you tell me though during that time that you you found that stuff in her room and noticed because she didn't she didn't approach her until afterwards I go did you notice any difference and she goes she did notice the difference and she did notice how much calmer she was she noticed all of that but you know what's wrong with it her own her friend who is the same age of her who is 71 years old smoked a little bit of weed 70 how much years ago she had a bad experience and that experience she goes i don't need a doctor to tell me my friend 
do, 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 do. But I just, I ended mm. up just pointing out certain things to her, the endocannabinoid system, the fact that maybe if she, if, if she notices that her daughter is different in a good way, learn some more about the herb, make sure she's taking the strains yes. that she does need to take because, you know, not all herb is good herb because everybody's body is different, you yes. know, so she yes. needs to be smoking or eating the strain that is, that is going to be helping her, but it has been, you know, so I did make her feel a little better too. Cause I'm like, Hey, just so you know, she's not ordering from me every week so right. she <laughs> you get me so she's really only using once in a blue moon and it seems like it's when she does not want to take those antidepressants because yes. it's not helping her it puts her in more of a depressive state than before you know so i mean yeah. I, I i implored her to like go to some of the dispensaries and talk to some of them I don't think here in Jamaica, it's really worth talking to some of the doctors in the dispensaries yeah. because how it's set up here is we go to a dispensary and they call someone and they ask just a few questions, like nothing. Like I did one the other day at a new dispensary. Mm -hmm. and The only thing that the, the doctor asked me was um, she didn't ask if I used cannabis before. She asked if I had any underlining um, problems, if I'm using any other medicine, mm -hmm. um, and that was it. She didn't ask what I'm going to be using the cannabis for, whether I use recreational or anything. And then before you know it, I could buy some herb. But I guess mm -hmm. that's just, uh, um, I guess that's kind of just uh, what I think of as a front, you know, because yeah. we ha you have to have a doctor to prescribe certain things. So okay. I guess that's kind of way of doing it, but. But yeah, I just told her, I was just like, go talk to a doctor. There's a doctor here in Kingston that his he's a naturopath and his specialty is cannabis mm -hmm. medicine. Um, and I told her, I go, go talk to him. Like, go talk to him and maybe he'll make you feel better. But don't listen to your 71-year-old friend because that was her experience with her body right. however right. long ago, you know? So right. my uh, I, I want to send my mom to you because <laughs> even though I've been in the cannabis industry now for... It's been about three years at this point. Um, and my mom works in mental health. She has for the past 30 years. And I remember uh, my first job uh, in the cannabis industry was with Leafly. And so when I started working at Leafly, she was like, oh, my God, Brittany, I just... I just, uh, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to work with that? And then she's asking all these questions about, she's she's from the South. My mom is from Tennessee and she has a very strong accent. She sounds like a she should be in Gone with the Wind or something. I don't know. But <laughs> she uh, definitely gave me all of the guilt trips. She gave me all of the, oh, is it legal? Is it is it safe? Like, are you going to get arrested? And even now, when um, I remember when I first started a green legacy, I took some branding photos and in them I was smoking. And my mom, she called me like back to back to back to back. And I, I didn't answer the phone uh, when she saw them, when I posted them. I think one of my siblings showed her. And um, she uh, eventually I called her back. Oh, one of my sisters had already told me that I was in trouble. She was like, when you, have you talked to mom? And I was like, no, I haven't talked to her. So she was like, well, you're going to, you're going to hear a whole bunch of stuff. So eventually I did talk to her a few weeks after she saw those photos. And my mom gave me the biggest guilt trip. She, everything from, you know, comparing it to heroin all the way to like, Oh, like, does my hus husband use it? His name is Jamal. And she was like, does Jamal use it? And I was like, ah, not very much. And she was like, thank God, because at least Prosper has one. Prosper, Prosper is my son's name. Uh, she was like, at least he has one parent who doesn't do that stuff. And so it was very, it's, it's definitely been a experience. But one thing that happened uh, not too long ago is my mom called and asked me, um, for information about CBD bombs for my aunt's shoulder because she had just gotten surgery on it. So <laughs> I think just taking it an inch at a time. Um, you know, I think right now we've gotten to the point where um, folks have had, and my mom has had seven, seven decades of anti-cannabis, this and that uh, propaganda and she's seen a lot of our family members too be arrested and prosecuted for it. And so we're having to deal with all of that.
we're having to deal with all of those things. Let's see. I think our, I'm not sure if the main stage is open. Um, if it is, then you probably will want to help over there. This uh, space, it wasn't supposed to end, I don't think, until 105. But usually it ends at 55 after. So maybe it was just a typo. But if you want to check out the main stage, see if they're up and popping, feel free. I'll stay on here till 105 just in case. Um, it's There's not anything going over there, on over there. Uh, let's see, Ashley, you said, my mom has been supportive from the beginning. I remember finding her weed and smoking with her. I love her so much for being my biggest cheerleader and proponent. Go mama. Seriously, go mama. There's not a lot who are like that. There aren't. When, how old were you when you found your mom's stash? Was that Ashley? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm my, so mom, my mom is, I think, I think even though she knows I'm in the business, uh -huh. I think she's still in denial somewhat. Cause even when I started my business and I told her uh -huh. she didn't, she didn't put the cannabis um, together with my baking. She thought when I said herb, she was yes. thinking that herbs. like oregano and yeah. And it was after like one day, like, because I didn't have a, a I didn't have a, a oven at the place that I was mm -hmm. living. So I used to bake up at a friend's house. And one day I was just so frustrated and I'm like, I just can't wait till I have my own oven, you know, like, yes. and I remember she was just like, oh, why don't you go by your landlord? And I go, oh, I don't want to stink up her house of weed. And yeah. she goes, oh, what? And I go, what do you think is in the stuff? And she was just like, oh, so do you, you eat it too? And, and she just, she kind of just buried it. And then maybe like a year later, we were talking about something. And my mom used to always have this thing where she would go, anything bad, she would go, it's the ganja. It's the ganja they're smoking. That's why. And I and it would hurt my me because too. all this time I've been smoking. I've been smoking since yeah. I'm 16. And one day she said it and I just couldn't have it anymore. And I go, I've been smoking ganja since I'm 16. And she just went, <gasps> then this is how she goes. I was born with asthma, okay? I was born uh -huh. with it. And the lady goes, that's why you have asthma. And I'm like, are you serious, mommy? But I do come from a background of like, my, my family is definitely not for cannabis. My brother, every chance he gets and he sees a picture of me with a joint, with anything, yep. he shows my mom. I'm 43 years old. And my mom will still call me and be like, oh, your brother showed me this picture. And I'm thinking, I want to say to her, I really want, I, I just don't want to hurt her heart. And I don't yes. want to get my brother upset. But my 23, my 23 year old nephew that lives under that same roof with her, he's such a stoner. And she has no idea. She has no idea, but poor me. Oh my 43 year old but can't smoke no herb. You, well, you're also a good sister because... I I have to I I hold my tongue for my siblings too, but I'm like, how are you gonna be over here about me about me? And and my mom, she's very similar to yours. She'll be like, mm, is that is that because is that that weed that you've been smoking or that yeah. marijuana as she says? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's so much of it. But yeah, um, it's sad though. It's sad because even the other day when I was there, like every time I travel, I get really bad migraines, and yeah. one of the reasons is because I'm not using. Yes. And the other day while I was there, I snuck and took a toke outside. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. almost had to cut my trip short because of it. Like it was okay. Yeah. Not wow. cool. Yeah, it's it's so much. It's so much going on out here, and I think um, I feel like. My my mom did something very similar to yours in that initially when I told her what I did, after we talked about it that first time, I think she kind of buried it away. So mm -hmm. for her to like see it, she was like, oh my God, you're really serious. Like this is really a thing. And she yeah. couldn't anymore. And so it's it's still a process. I, I want them to be okay with it though, because we've been celebrating so many wins as women in business. And like, exactly. I, it's like I'm like, I have my family that's there that is mm -hmm. like, and I'm doing so well in the industry. And like, I don't feel, they're not proud at all. Like they wish I wasn't doing this. And oh I'm like, look God. at my guys, look at what I'm doing. Like, that is look so at it's annoying. It's it true. Is what it, is. it Exactly. It is what it is. And you know, it's funny because um, I, uh, when I, I went back home re recently to Tennessee and um, 
I showed my family the website that I'm getting ready to launch. And so I already had like a landing page that was rinky dinky, terrible website. Um, but now I have a new one that I'm getting ready to launch uh, probably in a few weeks. And when they saw it, they were like, oh, this is your business. Like, oh, this seems, oh, like I, like, it's almost like it legitimized it for them in some ways where they were like, oh, okay. Like, this is really cool. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't what I thought it was. <laughs> so, yeah. It just, it is what it is. Um, having people like you within the network in the community is just, is so huge because even if we don't have support in these other areas, we can support we, each other. Exactly. We can support each other. So it's, it's a lot. I'm guessing that the stage has to be open. Yeah, it has to be. So All right, let's go see what's going on over there. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Bye.